Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Thursday Thanksgiving morning church service from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We will open our service by singing hymn number 342. This is the day the Lord hath made. Be glad, give thanks, rejoice. Stand in his presence unafraid. In praise lift up your voice. All perfect gifts are from above, and all our blessings show the amplitude of God's dear love, which every heart may know. Hymn number 342. I will now read a Thanksgiving Day proclamation from John Hancock, a forefather of our nation, a former governor of Massachusetts, and a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Whereas it is the incumbent duty of communities as well as individual persons 
to recollect the innumerable blessings conferred upon them by their all-gracious Father and Benefactor. And as the season of the year is now approaching when, in imitation of the example of our venerable forefathers, a day has been invariably set apart for this laudable and religious purpose. I accordingly appoint Thursday of November next to be observed as a day of public thanksgiving and praise throughout this commonwealth, hereby calling upon ministers and people of every denomination to assemble on the said day and render to God the tribute of praise for his unmerited goodness towards us, in favoring us with so great a measure of health, in preserving us from desolating judgments, insofar smiling upon our trade, our liberty, and the works of our hands, and in continuing to us the innocent enjoyments of social life, the means of religion, the right of private judgment, and the holy scriptures, which are able to enlighten and make us wise to eternal salvation. And it is highly becoming that we present our humble and penitent supplications to the God of all grace, that he would be pleased mercifully to forgive our manifold sins, and through the sanctifying influences of his Spirit, correct our heart and manners and make us a holy and happy people, that he would be pleased to preserve to us our invaluable rights and liberties, civil and religious, to prosper the administration of the government of the United States and of this and other states in the Union, to smile upon our university in all seminaries of learning so that streams may issue from them to make glad the city of our God, to put an end to civil and religious invasions on the rights of men, and to cause the benign religion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be known, understood, and practiced among all the inhabitants of the earth. Linda from New Jersey will now read a selection from the scriptures. Philippians 4. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, stand fast in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, 
think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and then follow by repeating together the Lord's Prayer together with the spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious, hallowed be thy name, adorable one, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom is come, thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love over all and all. Let us now sing hymn number 283. Praise we the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Let us extol him with joyous and loving endeavor. Come, let us sing praising our God and our King. Should we be silent? Ah, oh, never. Hymn number 283.
Our lesson sermon for this Thanksgiving morning can be found on page 18 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Thanksgiving. Golden text, Psalms. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Responsive reading is from Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness, and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Dede from Georgia will now read. I will read from the Bible. Psalms. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Many, O Lord my God, are thy beautiful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Second Chronicles There came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then upon Jehaziel came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours but God's. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And they rose, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. He appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Psalms. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. 
Mark. And Jesus, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Psalms Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Isaiah Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Psalms Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Carol will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. (laughs) Salvation. Life, truth, and love understood and demonstrated as supreme over all. Sin, sickness, and death destroyed. The understanding that life is God, spirit, lengthens our days by strengthening our trust in the deathless reality of life, its almightiness and immortality. This faith relies upon an understood principle. This principle makes whole the diseased, and brings out the enduring and harmonious phases of things. Are we benefited by praying? Yes. The desire which goes forth hungering after righteousness is blessed of our Father, and it does not return unto us void. Prayer cannot change the science of being, but it tends to bring us into harmony with it. Goodness attains the demonstration of truth. God is love. Can we ask him to be more? God is intelligence. Can we inform the infinite mind of anything he does not already comprehend? Do we expect to change perfection? Shall we plead for more at the open fount, which is pouring forth more than we accept? The unspoken desire does bring us nearer the source of all existence and blessedness. 
How empty are our conceptions of deity? We admit theoretically that God is good, omnipotent, omnipresent, infinite, and then we try to give information to this infinite mind. We plead for unmerited pardon and for a liberal outpouring of benefactions. Are we really grateful for the good already received? Then we shall avail ourselves of the blessings we have and thus be fitted to receive more. Gratitude is much more than a verbal expression of thanks. Action expresses more gratitude than speech. If we are ungrateful for life, truth, and love, and yet return thanks to God for all blessings, we are insincere and incur the sharp censure our master pronounces on hypocrites. In such a case, the only acceptable prayer is to put the finger on the lips and remember our blessings. While the heart is far from divine truth and love, we cannot conceal the ingratitude of barren lives. God knows our need before we tell him or our fellow beings about it. If we cherish the desire honestly and silently and humbly, God will bless it. What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire for growth in grace, expressed in patience, meekness, love, and good deeds. To keep the commandments of our Master and follow his example is our proper debt to him and the only worthy evidence of our gratitude for all that he has done. Outward worship is not of itself sufficient to express loyal and heartfelt gratitude, since he has said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. The habitual struggle to be always good is unceasing prayer. Its motives are made manifest in the blessings they bring, blessings which, even if not acknowledged in audible words, attest our worthiness to be partakers of love. The power of God brings deliverance to the captive. No power can withstand divine love. Divine mind rightly demands man's entire obedience, affection, and strength. No reservation is made for any lesser loyalty. Obedience to truth gives man power and strength. Submission to error superinduces loss of power. Christian science awakens the sinner, reclaims the infidel, and raises from the couch of pain the helpless invalid. It speaks to the dumb the words of truth, and they answer with rejoicing. It causes the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, and the blind to see. Now, cried the apostle, is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Meaning not that now men must prepare for a future world salvation or safety, but that now is the time in which to experience that salvation in spirit and in life. Now is the time for so-called material pains and material pleasures to pass away, for both are unreal because impossible in science. To break this earthly spell, mortals must get the true idea and divine principle of all that really exists, 
and governs the universe harmoniously. Spirit and its formations are the only realities of being. When we learn the way in Christian science and recognize man's spiritual being, we shall behold and understand God's creation, all the glories of earth and heaven and man. Again, welcome to our Thanksgiving service. I would like to encourage everyone to browse through our website, plainfieldcs.com. It's all free and there's so much good stuff there. Join us every Sunday. We start at 10 o'clock with our round table, 11 o'clock with our church service. I would like to cordially invite all of your children to attend our Sunday school, which meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. And they can do so by teleconference. So call the church. We'll give you the number for the Sunday school. And with that, we're going to go ahead with our testimonies. Keep in mind, however, for those of you who are on the teleconference, 
And when you're ready, please press the star button twice, but also we ask that you be in a quiet place so that we don't pick up any extra noise. And I will call on each of you one at a time by name. And our meeting is now open for sharing brief testimonies of gratitude appropriate for the occasion. Janet. Janet from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you for this beautiful service. I am so grateful to our Father and Mother God, for in Him is our liberty and justice. I'm grateful for our Master, Christ Jesus, for Mary Baker Eddy, the woman in the apocalypse. I'm very grateful for this Plainfield Christian Science Church. I love you all so much, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Nancy from New Jersey, go ahead. I wish to express my gratitude for this absolutely beautiful, heart-touching Thanksgiving service. I'm so grateful to God for his ever-present love and care. I'm grateful for Christ Jesus, for Mary Baker Eddy, and for Christian science as it is taught in this beautiful independent church. I am grateful for my dear, beloved church family and all our members and for the abundant blessings that I have received since coming to this beautiful church. Thank you, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Dave. Dave from Florida, go ahead. I'm grateful for Christian Science to be a member of this church for all the good that I've received, and to know that God and God alone governs this nation, and that is a truth that cannot be reversed. Thank you. Thank you. Annie. Annie from Virginia, go ahead. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to express my gratitude today and every day for Christian Science, Mrs. Eddy, and the Plainfield Church. I'm so thankful for all the work that is done at this church, bringing so much good light and love to the world. I know it is changing my life, pulling me up and uplifting all who hear the beautiful healing word of God. I cannot thank you enough for all that you do, and thank you for the readings and this lovely service. I'm so grateful, and I want to wish everyone a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Luann. Luann from New York. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm grateful to God for those first pilgrims of Nazareth who bravely stood against the world and ushered in the Christ. I'm grateful for my practitioner for her prayers and stable work that has brought about many healings, not only for myself, but throughout the world. May the light of God continue to shine upon us all, and may we never turn our gates from all that we have been given. Thank you. Thank you. Candy. Candy from Wisconsin. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Today I would like to express gratitude to this church, its dedicated workers past and present, to Christian Science, to Mary Baker Eddy, and Jesus for showing us a very special way to live. Since joining this church, I have noticed a greater sense of joy, a more organized household, the dissolution of family problems, and many more blessings. Thank you all, and enjoy your Thanksgiving. Thank you. Joanne. Joanne from Florida, go ahead. Today I want to give thanks to God for the magnificent outreach of this church. Its healing website has not only enabled us to attend and participate in our church from so far away, but it's also opened the way for new receptive hearts from all over the world to come and learn about Mrs. Eddy's pure Christian science and be healed by it. Christian science is truly God's greatest gift to mankind. I thank God for what this church is doing, and I'm humbly grateful to be a member of it. God bless you all. Thank you. Ron or Linda. Ron or Linda from North Carolina, go ahead. This is Ron, and expressing gratitude to God 
to Mary Baker Reddy and to the Plainfield Church Independent um, for all the outreach, which uh, is too numerous to express here, uh, the practitioners, uh, the light that uh, you, you bring to the world that uh, is just incredibly invaluable, and, and we so are, appreciate and are grateful for it. Thank you. Thank you. Pam. Pam from Virginia. Go ahead. Yes. I cannot begin to truly express enough gratitude for this church and all that it has done for myself and my family. I grew up as a Christian scientist and attended many meetings in the Mother Church in Boston over the years and had class instruction and had a number of significant healings during those years. But something was still lacking. I felt I was missing a sense of direction and how to work in this science and to be more effective. In other words, to continue having demonstrations of healing and learning how to handle and destroy animal magnetism, which had been so prevalent in the world, our nation, the Christian community around the world, my family, and finally myself. When I was led to this wonderful church through its website, I felt I'd found the answer just by reading the history of the church and how it stands on its own with God's help and direction to present the pure Christian science to the world. Since I became a member of this church, I've had the direction and answers I've been looking for to progress in my study and practice of this science. The writings of the original workers, Martha Wilcox, Gilbert Carpenter, Edward Kimball, and Bicknell Young are offered on this website. The Bible studies and the inspiring and formative roundtable discussions, the dedicated practitioners, all of this is the best education you could find on Christian science. I am grateful to God for Christ Jesus, for our dear country, the United States of America, the home of Christian science, and the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. Thank you, and happy Thanksgiving to all. Thank you. Linda from North Carolina, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I just wanted to say, because I hope this person is listening also, the wonderful opportunities that we have to share, even though we're not in the same state or in the same building. Uh, my landlady uh, gave me Retrospection and Introspection by Mary Baker Eddy over 40 years ago, and it set me on a path. Obviously, I'm still with it. She is still my best friend, and I thank you all for having this venue for us to worship God in our individual ways, but coming together on such a special day. Thank you. Thank you. Betty, Betty from California, go ahead. Good morning. This morning I wish to express gratitude for God's blessings, lessons learned, and protect practitioner help for me and mine. I am also very grateful for this church, the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, for teaching and living Christian science as Mrs. Eddy intended, and for the wonderful outreach of this church that is a beacon of light going out to the world. I am also very grateful for all the new people listening in and participating in church activities. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie. Carrie from California. Go ahead. Good morning. I wanted to thank you for the reading selected to celebrate this day with the historical proclamation by John Hancock. I enjoyed hearing that. And um, I want to express my gratitude for this church, its practitioners, and members, all of whom I have never met face-to-face, -face, but know very well from the sharing of inspirations, gratitude, and testimonies in the online services. Mrs. Eddy loves Thanksgiving, and I guess this is why it's called out each year with its own special Thursday lesson. For me, it's a special reminder of the importance of that state of thought preached about in the Bible and carried forward in Mrs. Eddy's writings, which is required to bring us into harmony with our Creator and the universe He created. I take this thought with me each day 
and thank God as I witness each blessing in my life and others to affirm his presence and tender care for us all. With all my love, happy Thanksgiving, Plainfield. Thank you. Dale. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. Good morning. I'm very grateful to be a member of this church where the focus is always on God good and our Father, Mother, God's all power and ever presence. I'm grateful for our solid foundation of Bible studies and the teachings and works of Christ Jesus. I'm very grateful for the November 2020 issue of Love is the Liberator with the theme Christ and Christmas and all the insight presented on that wonderful and inspiring work by Mary Baker Eddy. I'm grateful for the metaphysical workers in this church who are fearlessly and joyously holding on to God's allness. And in this obedience, as Ian George Watt said in his article, Speeding the Victory, comes our ability to do our duty to humanity and to hasten the dawn of universal and enduring peace. Thank you again for this service. Thank you. Jeremy. I am grateful for Christian Science, for this church, for practitioner support, for God giving me purpose and place here, and for everyone who God has brought here to be a part of this mission. It is wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Craig. I am so glad that I am here on this Thanksgiving, and I, I am so glad that uh, I found this church. I learned real gratitude here in this church. When I first came, teacher had turned me to him three, a grateful heart a garden is, trying to teach me who came out of the world how to think and live right. And I realized she was teaching me how to be the man that God made as Mrs. Eddie describes, and that all good things do come from God. And if you're not grateful regularly, all the time, you, you're not living that. And as a result, many times I had such little inspiration in my life and was bland and often dull. The life has turned into something that where I have a generally happy disposition and, and better health. Instead of just dragging through the days, it's a, more of a joy and a delight and a satisfaction. I thank Mary Baker Eddy for this, because you really can't help anyone if you aren't yourself in that right state of mind. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, Mississippi. Karen from Mississippi, go ahead. Good morning. I want to thank you for this beautiful service. I'm so grateful, Mrs. Eddy provided for a Thanksgiving service, and I'm grateful to Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent for this shared morning of Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. I love all the testimonies before, and I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Lil. Thank you for this blessed service. I'm so grateful that God led me to this independent Christian Science Church where I have learned about loving and giving, not getting. Every part of my life has been so blessed by God. I have never been happier. I can't be grateful enough for God's great love. Thank you. Thank you. Now this is Bruce. And my gratitude and thanks this morning is literally for all of you, all of you. God brought you to this church by some means or another. And I'm so thankful for this cause of Christian science going forth from the Plainfield Church and for all of you who contribute and do a part in it. Thank you. Linda. I'm very grateful to have found this church and to be here today. I'm very grateful for the truth that goes out from here, that does not tolerate air in any form in our lives, our homes, our families, our communities, our nation, or our world. 
I'm very grateful to, for Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and again this church. Thank you. Carol. I'm very grateful for, <clears throat> for Mrs. Eddy and for her great work that she did. Uh, she has left us a gift that is unspeakable. And I'm so grateful for this church that's really living it the way it should be. And very grateful to God for just for so many good things, all the blessings, all the growth, and all the expansion that this church has, has found all year long. Very grateful to God for this church. Thank you. Thank you. Tara from New Mexico. Go ahead. This is yet another big shout out of gratitude to Mary Baker Eddy, who saw fit to make Thanksgiving the only special service each year in order to teach us just how important gratitude is in the practice of Christian science. And another shout out of gratitude and joy to everyone at Plainfield, past, present, and future, who keep teaching how essential joy and gratitude are as we each work out our own understanding of this amazing science of Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Elsie. Elsie from Alabama. Go ahead. I want to thank everyone in Plainfield for this wonderful service. Above all, I thank God, the Christ, Mrs. Eddy, and I feel so grateful to you all because you do a beautiful, beautiful job. You are truly dedicated. I thank every member who participates. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Jim from Arizona, go ahead. What a joyous Thanksgiving this is, and what a wonderful service. Thank you. And thank you as well. Shardy. Everybody said all the words and thoughts of love that I had in my heart, have in my heart. So, our, uh, and I'm just so grateful that we could be here together praising God in the United States of America at the Plainfield Independent Church. Thank you. Sharon. I want to thank God, Mrs. Eddy, for giving us Christian science, for practitioner help and teaching, and for all the blessings that God has given us, and for all the new participants that have joined our church. It's such a wonderful, God-like family to be part of. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Susan, Massachusetts. Susan from Massachusetts, go ahead. Good morning. I'm so grateful to God to have found Plainfield Church and for all I'm learning here and the examples of everyone here have been so great to me. And um, also, I really loved the solo today. And thank you to the practitioners, the members here, the website, and all of the work that's involved. Um, I really feel its presence. And I'm grateful for Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy for giving us Christian science and all it's doing for the world. Thank you for the service today. Thank you. Luba from Ohio, go ahead. I'm so grateful for how Christian science has en enriched my life, and I'm especially grateful to have found this church and all the blessings in it ha that it has brought, and this, uh, this service today is so important, and I'm so grateful for it. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. <clears throat> Well, we certainly have a tremendous amount to be grateful for. Those of us who live in the United States have the privilege of living in a nation, the basis of which is the sanctity of man's relationship with God and the government of God. And that basis has served as a source of inspiration to every nation in the world. And mankind is better 
because of it. And that nation gave birth to Christian science, which is prophesied in the Bible and which is divinely directed and divinely protected. I'm grateful to Mary Baker Eddy for her courage, for her inspiration, for her willingness to stand up to the wiles of the devil and give us the science of Christianity. And I'm grateful to those who followed, <coughs> who are faithful in giving Christian science in its true form to the world. And I'm grateful for the patriots of this nation who are willing to work hard to live up to the foundation that our forefathers put forth in our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. We know that that basis will only be realized as the world sees and accepts Christ's Christianity. And that is our purpose for being here today. So I'm grateful to be with all of you who are furthering Christ's Christianity for the world. Thank you. Wendy. Wendy from Georgia, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for providing this loving Thanksgiving service today. I wish to express my deepest gratitude to God for his unending love and compassion for all his children and for sending us to Christ to show us the way to eternal life and to Mary Baker Eddy for bringing to light this healing religion. I'd also like to express my gratitude for this church, its members and practitioners, for the Sunday School, the Round Table, and for the wonderful, bountiful, healing Plainfield website and the many gifts that it freely offers to us and everyone around the world that it's reaching in so many different languages and countries, blessing those who are receptive to its inspirational and healing truth. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Florence. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I'm so grateful to be here and thankful to God for this service. I am grateful for Christian science because of the changes it's made in my life. It's taught me that God is all power and that evil of any kind has no power whatsoever. I have learned to forgive myself if I've made a mistake and to humbly live according to God's direction. And I'm so grateful to learn to live love and truth and to watch what my intentions and my motives are in everything I do. May God, his joy and comfort be with us all. Happy <clears throat> to be here. Thank you. Mary. We have one email from our friend in England. I am very grateful for finding the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent and for all the services, roundtable teaching, and Bible studies broadcast over the last year. I'm especially grateful for regular practitioner support and for all the information provided on the church website. I am so grateful to be learning from the writings of the early workers which are not available in the organization and to be discovering the true history of the Christian Science Church and its mission to mankind. I am grateful to be gaining a better appreciation for Mrs. Eddy and her discovery and am very grateful that, the, that this information is reaching around the world thanks to the efforts of your dedicated church workers. I am grateful for the music and solos in the services, for those who prepare, translate, and read the lessons, and for all of the testimonies. Much gratitude and love to you all. And also last night I read an email and I didn't know where it was from and I heard from this person today and he is from Nairobi, Kenya. This has been a very holy time together and I'm so grateful to be here. Um, everything was expressed so beautifully today. Um, the beautiful music and solo are proclamation, Thanksgiving proclamation from John Hancock for all of the beautiful testimonies from all of you from all around the world. 
We have so much to be grateful for and a mission to keep us going for a long time to come. We love you all. God bless you and God bless this holy day. Thank you. To close our meeting, we will sing hymn number 73. Glory, honor, praise, and pure oblations unto God the Lord belong. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Come before him with a song. In his hand is all the power of nations. Sing to him, ye joyous congregations, psalms of gratitude and praise unto God the Father raise. Hymn number 73. Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. First John. 
Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Amen.